Welcome to Reread, where I'm rereading through the expanded universe in chronological order. And we're talking about two little stories today. The first one is a four part comic book issue series written by Ron Mars called Darth Maul. Darth Maul is sent on a mission by Darth Sidious to take out the Black Sun organization. Not to eliminate them, but to definitely take them down a lot of pegs where it's going to take them years, maybe even a couple of decades to recover. Now, Maul asks him, or do you want me to eliminate them all? He's like, no, they may prove useful later on. Of course, shows the Empire, right? But Darth Sidious knows that his plans to take over the entire galaxy are coming to a head now, and he also sees Black Sun as a maybe, maybe could be a threat. So he wants to give them their own little crisis to deal with so they can be, you know, out of commission at least for a couple of years while they rebuild. And so who's going to tear down that sandcastle? Darth Maul. This is an excellent four-part series. I'd forgotten how good it was. Ron Mars, an established veteran writer, he wrote many DC comic books, which I have read and enjoyed over the years. So seeing his name, of course, that excited me. And then secondly, seeing how he just let the story tell, talk to itself, meaning he didn't write a bunch of dialogue. There's pages in this where it's just Darth Maul just going on a rampage, killing everyone. You're thinking, well, that's not writing. Yeah, he wrote those scenes in there, and that's good because Darth Maul is the quiet type. Now, the reason Darth Maul talks so much, and at least the first half of the series, is he's pretending to be someone who wants to enter the Black Sun organization. He wants this, this guy to trust him and take him to the Vigo, who he does, and then, of course, Darth Maul unleashes rage and kills them all. He does it again in the second comic book though it's abbreviated we we only get to see the end we see all these dead bodies and he's got the lightsaber hovering over the Vigo who tells him where all the other black sun Vigos are going to hide out there's a big uh, safe house they're all going to with the with the president or whoever's the leader of black sun and they're all going to this planet to kind of lock down with a hundred assassins or whatnot and to be protected from Darth Maul so Darth Maul now learns the location and he heads there now, of course, the Black Sun Vigos, they're all blaming one another for who, who's sending this assassin after us. They, the president says, hey, don't worry. I have you all. We're all safe here. No one could possibly, uh, you know, uh, kill us here. And, of course, no one except for Darth Maul. Darth Maul comes in there, blasts through all of them. There is a Night Sister who is the bodyguard of the president of Black Sun. And... This this obviously was written before some of the short stories or before Darth Maul was established as a knight brother. Because in it she goes, uh, the knight sister tells Darth Maul, you have never seen my kind before. And then Darth Maul goes, you have never seen my kind, you know, like Sith, and chops her down. Now obviously, if we look at Darth Maul's story, he has, he has seen their kind before. But that knight sister may not have known that. That is not a contradiction at all. But it is kind of funny how she senses he's more than a dark Jedi. She doesn't know. She realizes in the end, before she dies, who he is. There's this nice predator moment where she tears the balls to take off down the bridge. And she stands there at the end of the space bridge with her knife. Well, not her knife, but her uh, sword out waiting for uh, Darth Maul to come and attack her. Uh, and, of course, there's just a lot of great panels of great action and just grunting from Darth Maul or screams of his victims. And it's really good. It's a really good book. Uh, Chris Claremont, who everyone loves, writes way too much. He's way wordy. You get bogged down in the dialogue. I, I, I don't. I think he's a very overrated writer. And uh, what Ron Mars does, and what a lot of good writers do, they give the comp book time to showcase its artwork. They give the comp, give the reader time to breathe and just enjoy the artwork. And that's exactly what you get to do here. And Ron Mars does a good balance in between that. Not making Darth Maul a chatty Cathy. He gives him a reason why he has to talk and pretend to be normal to infiltrate Black Sun. But after that, he's all business, man. It's the business end of his lightsaber, or both of them that he's coming at you with. And I love this. This series really surprised me. Me. It's a much better series than I uh, remembered, and if you haven't read it before, you definitely need to. Now, the next one I want to talk about is just a short story from the Star Wars Gamer number one. I think it's written by Steve Miller, even though I can't remember right now. It's called The Starfighter Trap, and it's basically a bunch of Naboo starfighters. Their captain is Asara, and she's leading a team, and they go out to face some pirates or intruders into Naboo, and it turns out that they're trying to capture the Naboo starfighters. So if they'll surrender the starfighters, They'll let the pilots go free or whatnot. Well, she refuses to do that, so they start fighting them. Well, her best friend, who she's known for years, 
turns on them. He's a traitor. He was in with the pirates and he's shooting down the other ships going, Asara, please, please just do what they say. Come on. We're getting too old for this. We don't need this. I'm tired of Naboo. And she's like, Drin, I've known you for years. How could you be this way? I can't believe you betrayed me. And it's just very long, long, long dogfight. I mean, give it to Star Wars Gamer Man. Their stories weren't really that short. I mean, after three or four pages of going, geez, how many pages is this? It's like eight, eight pages. Two columns, a small print on one page. How can you write that much? It wasn't really that interesting. At the end, I'm guessing we were supposed to be wowed by the fact that some of the pilots that are mentioned in there are the same pilots that are mentioned in episode one. I'm guessing. I don't know. I didn't even bother to look it up. But overall, it is not that exciting. It is not that exciting reading. It, it's funny because after reading The Monster with uh, Panaka, I was like, oh, cool, another Naboo story. And I couldn't remember exactly what it was because, like I said, it's been a while since I looked at the story, but I was excited to read it. And then afterwards, I was like, I don't need more pages. <laughs> I'm a short story. I'm doing that. So it's not really that good. But anyway, there it is. There's two more. I'll see you next time.